Now, the U.S. and NATO are issuing a stern warning to Syria's president today. President Obama says there will be consequences if chemical weapons are used in the Syrian conflict. I want to make it absolutely clear to Assad and those under his command, the world is watching. The use of chemical weapons is and would be totally unacceptable. And if you make the tragic mistake of using these weapons, there will be consequences and you will be held accountable. American officials believe Syria may be preparing to combine chemicals needed to make sarin gas. Syria's government claims it will not use chemical weapons against its people. NATO and the U.S., though, have issued warnings. In recent days, fighting near Damascus has intensified. Opposition groups against Bashar Assad continue to make advances, putting the Assad regime under strain. Joining us now with more on this developing story is our senior parliamentary reporter, Mark Dunn. He joins us live in Ottawa. So, Mark, what evidence do we have so far that Syria may be preparing to use chemical weapons? Well, I mean, we're, everything's being based on what uh, the United States says, Sneha, highly classified uh, intelligence information, and which would suggest to them that uh, the Syrians are up to something with their vast arsenal of, uh, of, of chemicals. You know, but, you know, remember in Libya, we talked about this before, the same thing. They thought that was going to happen there, and uh, nothing happened. I mean, I think there's a lot of geopolitical stuff going on right now, including the NATO foreign ministers meeting in Brussels. They're going to swift, swiftly approve uh, Dutch, uh, American, and I believe French batteries of Patriot missiles along the Turkish border to prevent at attacks there. Uh, but here's a little update on, on, on the Syrian story from the Canadian perspective. I just got uh, in contact with Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird, and his people are saying Canada is urging China and Russia to use its military or its influence uh, over the Syrian regime uh, to, to prevent uh, a, a, a the, uh, the, the, the president uh, from even considering uh, using chemical weapons and you know people must uh, remember that you know while the whole world has been calling for uh, besides the step down uh, the Chinese and the Russians have been sort of supporting uh, his regime so uh, the Canadian government is urging China and Russia uh, to use their influence uh, over the Syrian government to stop any p potential use of chemical weapons. Still is there uh, any sense at this point that China and Russia are loosening their alliances with Syria because this conflict has been going on for months more than a year and yet we continue to see uh, Russia and China they have backed Syria through it. Yeah, you know you're right. I mean this thing started, you know, civil war uprising whatever you want to call it in March 2011 over 40,000 people have died. Uh, but I think a lot of people, international observers, are, are seeing what's going on, on the ground right now. It's a critical phase as the rebel forces that are in Damascus are getting close uh, to the regime. Some people are thinking the night is tightening around uh, Assad, and like a rat back into a corner, he may react by using something like chemical warfare. Yes, the government there says they won't use it, use those sort of chemicals against the Syrian people. But how do you drop uh, chemical warheads on advancing rebel forces, and that gas does not get uh, affect the civilian population? So uh, all the eyes are watching what's going on right now because a lot of people think that uh, the regime, uh, the net is getting tighter and, and it's getting closer uh, to the end. But uh, Assad also on record saying that uh, he's not never going to leave uh, quietly. And, and when you have these kind of dictators running some of these kind of countries, they may act in, in, in a way that's just going to scare the bejesus out of the globe, people in the world. Yes, yeah, certainly an unpredictable situation as it stands right now and one will continue to track closely. Thank you, Mark. Anytime. That is our senior parliamentary reporter, Mark Dunn, in Ottawa.